Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Mavic Mini. Finally got it in for review. I'm going to do my full review series on this. This is going to be the first in the series. This will be an unboxing, inspection, setup, updating, and also just going through the on-screen controls and showing you what everything does on the table here. Of course, the next few videos in this series will be taking it out to the field, doing my infamous in-depth flight test. You're not going to see me pulling any punches and pulling out the negatives, I show the negatives and the positives, which I think every reviewer should do because you guys are dropping a lot of money on these drones and you want to see how they really perform, not how DJI wants you to see them perform. I'm going to give you the full on unbiased review. So let's get started with the Mavic Mini series. Don't forget guys, I will have that series card pop up here and also be in the description if you wanna see the flight test. I'm gonna be do, doing range testing and all that stuff. So anyway, let's get started. This has not been opened even out of the uh, plastic yet. So this is really just a fresh review. I haven't even really tried to watch any other reviews on this. Anyway, before we pull it out, let's see some specs on the box here. The unique feature of this one is it's 249 grams, guys, with the battery. And so that's all up flight weight. So that is a pretty big feat for a drone that can fly for 30 minutes. The FAA has a regulation in place where if you have a drone that's 250 or above, you do have to uh, register it. And I believe that's with anything, planes or anything for that matter, which is kind of ridiculous to me, but that's what's going on. So this one, you won't have to register because it kind of falls below that weight by one gram. So DJI was pretty smart in doing that. That's incredibly light for a drone that can fly for 30 minutes, max flight time. We'll be testing that too when we do our in-depth flight test. It can go for four kilometers with HD video transmission, real-time transmission back to the phone. So as you know, I also do very in-depth range tests on these. So we'll be checking that as well, seeing what the quality of the link is as we push it that far or possibly even farther, uh, depending on how it performs. It's got vision sensor and GPS precise hover. So there's vision sensor on the bottom. This does not have any sensors around the body, just on the very bottom to sense the ground. And then, of course, it has the uh, precise dual antenna GPS GLONASS uh, GPS receiver in there like all their other drones do. So it should give us some very, very good accuracy. Three axis gimbal. So wouldn't expect less for one of these drones. Uh, does do only 2.7K. So for some people, that's a little bit of a negative. The next step up would have been the Mavic Air over there, which does a really good 4K video, but that is quite a bit more expensive. We're only getting 2.7K on this, but we're gonna see how good that video looks in all of its glory when we do our flight testing. Simplified recording and editing. So apparently in their app, they're just having like some quick type of editing there. Okay, so breaking the seal. And man, this if this isn't the most hyped drone recently, I don't know what other drone is as hyped as this one. So really want to see how good this thing is. Wow, and just looking at it, oh my gosh, that's tiny. So to me, the main reasons you might want to buy this is because first of all, uh, DJI is known for their quality. Second of all, how dang small this thing is. I have pretty average, maybe a little bit larger size hands. And this thing is so small. My gosh, it is smaller than the Mavic Air. Check it out. Grabbing the Mavic Air here, and it is about an inch or two smaller front to back. And then the height is actually just around the same size, same height. And then the width is actually thinner when it's all folded up. So quite a bit smaller, guys, than the Mavic Air. So that's incredible. We'll compare it to the Mavic 2 Pro in just a second there, but just want to see the initial reaction of this. Uh, it looks just like a Mavic. So yeah, I mean, that's it. Like the Mavic 1, right? Man, this is pretty amazing. It's got a camera cover here. Really nice looking camera cover. It's kind of like a fogged clear. There's the brushless motors. It's all just packed up, packed away. There's the sensors on the bottom. Very interesting sensors because it looks like we have two infrareds and then one optical flow sensor in the middle. This is neat. These are all like cooling vents, an enormous amount of cooling vents all around the battery here. DJI, what they do is um, they make you charge the battery once to activate it. So that's why I'm not getting any uh, LED readout there on the battery. Man, this thing looks so darn small. So I guess we'll just set this down real quick and take everything else out of the box before we 
get too excited and too in depth into the drone itself. And really the only other thing in the box is the controller. And what's this here on the bottom? There we go. Looks like we have some peripherals and there are a couple of instruction manuals, quick start guide and your safety and warranty stuff. So don't put your fingers in the propellers or your toes or children's hands or your pets hands or toes or anything else. Let's see what's in the little peripheral package first and we'll go more in depth into the drone and the controller. So first of all, we have a USB cable. Let's finagle this out of here. So it is indeed just a regular micro USB cable. This is not a USB type C. So maybe they're saving a little bit of weight with these smaller USB uh, micro connectors. Let's just pull all this stuff out. A couple of connectors here, kind of proprietary square type of micro USB cable. And if you look at all these, we have a Apple lightning port, we have a USB type C, and then we have a regular micro USB. So that's gonna go from the controller to your phone. Three other bags here, and this one is joysticks. So we got one set of joysticks. We'll have to see if any actually come in the controller when we open that up, but there is one set of little black joysticks with nice grippy tops and a little bit of like a foam rubber on the sides that are gonna screw right into that controller. Yeah, so just a little mini gray Phillips head screwdriver. The last but not least, we have kind of two bags in one here. This looks like a bunch of uh, sealed little replacement screws. So apparently if you did want to change your propellers and you lose some of the screws, they give you extra ones here. And here is an extra set of propellers. Just Let's just try to break these buggers out, rip these guys out real quick and see what these are all about. Four propellers, so that's gonna be two sets. So, you know, for two motors. Would have been nice, of course, if they gave you the whole extra set, but they're trying to save a few cents, I guess, and not give you an entire set of propellers. So you're gonna have to go to the store and buy some more. Okay, and last but not least is the controller. So let's bust this thing out and just see exactly how this controller looks. To me, it looked pretty similar to the other Mavic type controllers. So here we go. We've got a little sticker on here, shows you what to do, how to put in the joysticks and unfold it, which we'll do in just a second. Let's peel that sticker off and not leave too much residue. As you can see, first off, there's no screen, so they're saving a bunch of money by not putting a screen on there, kind of like the Spark. Antennas on top, we'll pull these open. They do have a nice satisfying click here. See that? So they're gonna hold in there really, really good. With all these types of controllers, you have maximum antenna downwards angle like that. You have maximum up like this, and then you can twist them just about that far to uh, put them away. When you're flying, of course, you want the drone to be perpendicular to this flat side of the antennas. So you're gonna wanna fly like this. Drone's gonna be out in front. Our return to home button, we have a power button here. As you can see, we have just about 60% charged. We have a video record button. We've got a photo button. And then we have our just our gimbal roller right here. There is not gonna be any roller on the right side. Cooling vents here, all through the top. We've got our joystick gimbals here, and this is what's gonna hold the controller in. And cool, yeah, we do get an extra set of sticks. So these are the ones that are already installed. And remember, we did get that extra set in the utility box over there on the left. So if you do drop one of these in the grass, at least you have two extra ones, which was awesome. Very, very tight gimbals like DJI always usually does. So you're gonna get a lot of spring back with these guys. But um, that's okay with a GPS drone since you don't need to really do any kind of acro with it. Stiff sticks are okay to me in these types of drones. Anyway, looking at the bottom, there is no USB port like some of the other drones. So it looks like you're not gonna be able to plug possibly even in an iPad on this one unless maybe it'll accept an iPad with an adapter in here. And that you're also gonna be using to charge the controller. It's interesting how DJI still hasn't um, giving you a charge cable that is that proprietary kind of square micro uh, USB there. So you have to make sure you have the pins lined up in the right direction and then insert that cable. It will fit in here, but it's just interesting to me how 
DJI hasn't really resolved that issue of mixing and matching. So what this means essentially guys is if you only have that cable that came with the Mavic Mini, you're gonna have to charge the Mavic Mini and the controller one at a time. If you do have a micro USB hanging around the house, you'll be able to charge them both at the same time. So kind of interesting uh, there as well. A little way they're saving just a few cents. We do have cooling ports down there. And that's just our arms to hold in our phone. You can see just the typical arms there. And then you're gonna put your cable in here, wrap it around over, plug it in for your phone connection. There is no buttons on the back. It does have a nice contour here and that's it. Pretty plain Jane, little cheap controller for a pretty cheap drone. Uh, this one is a $399 or $400 drone. So they're trying to make it as cheap as possible, but with decent functionality. Okay, now that we've looked at all the boring stuff, guys, let's take a little bit more in-depth look at this Mavic Mini. Let's take off all these stickers. So let's take off the propeller stickers too. One up there, and these things just kind of fall out. Not really much tension on these. You see how they're just very, very um, loose and kind of swinging around. Look at those motors. Those are super tiny little motors, man. Those things are really, really small. Smaller than the air, smaller than the spark. Man, they're gonna be, no wonder it can fly so long. It's just gonna be super, super duper efficient. Let's take this off. It kind of shows you how to do the uh, battery opening scenario here where we just flip it open and then pull the battery out. Okay, as I'm pulling this sticker off, it is popping open the back. Right, so you gotta like basically put your fingernail under there, pop it up and check that out. That's your battery in there. There's a little tab here that you push up as you pull out. So there's a little arrow there, it shows you Put your finger on here, push it up, and then pull it out. And you can see what this is, guys, is it's two lithium ion 18650 batteries. Boy, that writing is so tiny, so you probably won't be able to see that, but it's 7.2 volts at 2400 milliamp hour. So uh, they're not using um, 3600 uh, mAh cells, they're using 2400 cells put in series so we get that higher voltage at 7.2 volts. So very low voltage craft, which is fine since it's so darn light. This is our connection right there on the top back where it's gonna actually connect inside of the drone. So a very simple little battery pack. Maybe we'll be able to extend the flight time on this with some lithium ion mods. And there's a good look way inside there. It's just basically a barren oval port. And there are the connectors right there to where the battery connects. So let's slide that in so you get one more look at how to do it. Just push, it snaps. Push that down, the door snaps nice and easy. Just remember you need your fingernail to kind of push that up and snap it closed. Which brings us to the back. There is a micro USB there. Plug this end into here and that's how you're gonna charge this battery. Micro SD card slot here for recording your video. Working our way around, just kind of taking off all these things. At least it's consistent with the very loose type of propellers. At least so several of them aren't tight and some of them aren't loose. They're all the same amount of looseness. This is a piece of tape that is around this gimbal protector. It says to remove before flight. So we're gonna, just gonna pull that thing off. And there is our camera. We basically have all the stickers off except for these couple of arm stickers. And it's showing you how to do this. So first off, we have to fold the rear arms or the front from the rear out to the front. Okay, so we'll do both of those. Boom, boom. And then number two is we rotate these guys down. So very rem reminiscent to pretty much all of their drones. There we go. So that's number two is pulling out the rear legs. There it is guys. That's essentially it with its fully extended arms. I'm going to twist these a little bit and wow, these are actually pretty flexy. And this is interesting um, compared to a lot of other DJI drones because they usually have a very, very sturdy arm, but these look at how much this can flex. So it's very flexy, but it looks like it's going to spring back and not get deformed at least. And one of the other drones that kind of, this kind of reminds me of, this flexiness, is the Parrot Anafi. Remember the Parrot Anafi? That thing has super flexy arms, even more so than this. But hey, you know, as long as it flies right, let's see if, it, if we push it up. Yeah, so you can actually see that flex too as I push it up. 
So more flex than any other DJI drone I've ever seen, but that's probably due to keeping it as light as possible using thinner material. So I don't wanna have these stickers on here anymore, so I'm gonna take these stickers off. And look at that, something that really stands out uh, on the side here, ultra light, 249 grams. So that is, what they are trying to do is they're trying to put this feature on the forefront, uh, being the lightest type of camera drone like this, probably ever with these capabilities with GPS, with downward sensors, 30 minutes of flight time. That's pretty amazing feat. Let's go ahead and look at the camera a little bit before we pull this thing around. So there's the gimbal guard, nothing special, just super simple. Two clips on top that kind of slide in first. And then uh, it doesn't look like you really have to position it perfectly until they kind of just go in and clip in there. And that thing is really sturdy and on there. It actually is on there pretty tight. You got to push that thing, open it up, pull that off. So great little guard there. And here's the camera. So a 2K camera, and it looks very similar to something like the Mavic Air camera. Again, this is our pitch access, and then that's our roll access, and then this is our yaw axis. Anyway, nice little looking camera, as long as it works and keeps the video very stable. It is all hanging from the very top inside by rubber dampers. If I pull it here, you can see how that is kind of pulling up and down. So be careful not to yank that out or you might uh, pull those dampers out. There's also dampers here on the very inside. I'm seeing dampers locked in right here. You can see that little rubber tabs. That is rubber holding that in. And if I shake it from left to right, see those guys stamping it and moving it. So DJI is very known for making their uh, video very incredibly rock solid so i would think that this is going to be up to par with any of their other drones that have a three axis gimbal very very rock solid and it should also be um, clear and stable in all of their hopefully all their functions we're going to be testing all those functions but they are known for that and according to what i've tested that does hold true. I do really like this kind of gray color. It does look pretty cool looking. Looks like two infrareds, one optical flow. There's a light there and there's our little feet. So no rubber on these little back feet. They're just directly on the plastic. And then the front is gonna rest on these little feet here, which do have, no, there's no rubber on these either. So no rubber, they're just going strictly plastic here. This looks like it's just cosmetic. There is no airflow coming through there, which is interesting. They're counting on all the airflow coming through the gimbal area. There is, however, grills on either side of the back part, back top. And these, this is actually a vent. So there's gonna be a fan in there, probably sucking air through here, and then it's gonna be blowing it out through these little vents here because DJI stuff does get pretty hot because it is, pretty high performance. There's our DJI logo there and all of its glory right on top. And that guys really is all there is to look at. I mean, it's pretty simple, nothing super special, but it is a fairly affordable $400 drone. Let's see if we do it the wrong way. If we do the bottom first coming out, it will not let you open the sides because you see how those legs pop over. So there's really no way you can um, open it up the wrong direction like you could kind of the Mavic Air which to me, it didn't really matter. Propellers were a little more tweaked in a certain direction, but nothing major. So just make sure this comes out first and then you pull these down. Very, very simple. You can see how fast that opens up and you're ready to deploy. I wanna get just a slightly closer look on these propellers. Now these things, look at these. These are so paper thin, these propellers. And that's gonna cut down on the um, swinging inertia mass and just weight in general. There is some uh, numbers on here. I wanna just read that real quick. DJI E2 4726F. And as you can see, they're just screwed on right there and they give us the wrench in the box to change those if we need to. So very, very simple, tiny, light propellers. Anyway, before I charge this thing up and boot it up, let's see how it looks compared to the Mavic 2 pro guys now this is like a seventeen hundred dollar drone so this is not a cheap drone and there is the mavic air right on top look how small that is and it's a lot lighter too remember 249 grams with the battery in there that's just incredible this is like a mac daddy huge drone compared to this little guy so might this be the best beginner drone to get i don't know there's sure is a lot of hype on it well, we won't really know until we fly it, right? Let me get this thing up on the 
uh, phone and let's see what the interface looks like. Let's download the app, see what kind of updates we got to do, and then we'll wrap it up with a little pros and cons thus far. And you need the DJI Fly app. Go DJI Fly Search. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. That time it came up. For some reason, it didn't come up. If it doesn't come up, they give you this little paper in here, this little quick start guide. Go ahead and scan the QR code, and it took me right to DJI's site to download it. There it is there. For some reason, it wasn't coming up in the um, the app, the Android store. So you might have a little bit of a different um, scenario with the Apple store. Just called DJI Fly. And then we're going to go ahead and start it here. Up on the top right, you've got a little book icon, and this is gonna be for like all of your tutorials, tips, flight safety, and the user manual. So you can go ahead and go through this if you really don't know what's going on, and just look at all that content there to get yourself familiarized. Approximately an hour and a half to charge both um, if you just kind of leave them plugged in. Anyway, let's get this thing connected. So first of all, we want to connect the controller. So we're just going to open up the bottom like this. We already did go ahead and screw on the sticks, open up the antennas, put them up like this, get the cable that's pertinent to your cell phone, kind of like their rectangular micro USB proprietary little connection there. So we're putting that in there, and then we just have this side over here. What I'm noticing is it does look like they kind of have done away with that little sleeve that you get with, say, like the Mavic, Mavic Pro series. So they're just kind of counting on you pushing this through here, and it just kind of hangs out. Grabbing our phone, putting our phone right in this little slot here. And these clamps are pretty solidly clamped in and make sure you push that into your phone or tablet there. So we're ready to go. Um, probably what you want to do is leave this unplugged initially before we turn everything on. So what we'll do first is we'll turn on the controller. So just to press, press and hold until you hear the tone. And to turn the Mavic Mini on, we just same thing, just find the power button on the bottom. Press, tells you how much power you have, as you can see, fully charged. Press, press and hold. And you'll see the lights come up. And then we want to immediately kind of set it down there. And you can see the gimbal there is rotating around, doing a little self-check. And we're still seeing this light on the right on the controller is blinking. And there it just went solid. You see my finger over here on the right. So that way we know that um, the controller is linked up to the drone. The final plug-in. And let's see if it auto-launches this app that we just installed and set up. DJI Fly app. So plugging in there, I'm hearing a little double vibration and it says DJI Fly always open. I'm gonna press okay and okay. And there we go. So it's gonna automatically launch that from now on. Activation dialog here and agree. Confirm binding account, make sure your email's in there. And that's again gonna be the account you set up when you did install this application. So we're gonna go ahead and activate on our email account and aircraft activated aircraft resetting wireless network settings to match local laws and regulations wait and connect again later so that means it's knowing what country you're in by your location and it is setting the according um, signal power to your country so keep that in mind it does looks like it does look at what country you're in there then we have uh, option to choose DJI care refresh I'm gonna press X out of this for now confirm and right away we have a Mavic mini update 3.47 megabytes optimizes image transmission quality to ensure sharper, pre sharper preview that's awesome of course we want to better our FPV preview so let's go ahead and update update this Okay, looks like it's at 89%. Just heard the controller beep. So I'm thinking it's updating the controller and the actual drone software and firmware. All right, and this just popped up. DJI Fly open to handle MR1SD25. All right, so I guess that is the, that's what they're calling the controller. Just pressed OK and it says update success. And here's another update. So this is gonna be something you're gonna need to do guys. If you do get DJI stuff, this is always the case. Give yourself about an hour after you charge your battery initially to update all this stuff. This update is 36 megabytes, increased takeoff stability, add support for quick shots, 
and more flight modes, optimizes images quality, increased video smoothness, optimizes nighttime shooting, that's good for low light, and optimizes LED prompts for overall device status. So I'm going to go ahead and update this and we'll just let that run through its update and see if we have any issues. Okay, we're at about 77%. It looks like the aircraft just updated. So just rebooted itself. And that took about 10 minutes to get that far to uh, approximately around 80%, which is where the uh, update is. But it looks like it's doing its thing. There it goes rebooting again. So that was rebooted twice. There goes the, the camera gimbal. So just really got to let it do its thing. It looks like it's going quicker now. Don't want to interrupt this process because if you interrupt this and turn things off and on while it's doing this, uh, you're going to have to start all over again or, you know, you may bugger up your firmware updates. Okay, just about done. We're at 97%. There we go. We just got a check mark. So update successful when aircraft automatically powers off restart aircraft. Okay, so remember it said to power up again. So pressing, press and hold. Let's let that guy power up. And I'm not really touching anything on the controller yet. So I want it to relink, possibly tell me if it has anything to do here. Nope, so it looks like it's not doing anything. So I'm gonna press X at the very top here. And there we go. Okay, so we got a little icon there on the top left. It says Mavic Mini Firmware Update Successful. An X out of that, that goes away. And we can also just press Go Fly. Let's see if we just press Go Fly. Beginner Flight Tutorial. Okay, so if you're a beginner, uh, if this is your first drone, I would definitely do this. Maybe we'll just click through it real quick so you guys know what to expect. Okay, so safety checking propellers and ensure the aircraft is placed with rear side facing you. Shows you how to orientate your antennas just like they are like this. I have them now. Start auto check. Okay, and that brings us into our um, interface. So as you can see, Typical DJI interface, except it looks like it's a little bit trimmed down for this DJI Fly app. It's not giving us the full-fledged um, Go 4 application like the other Mavics and stuff have. Takeoff permitted here, that means it is a safe, uh, everything's calibrated correctly, and there's enough satellites. As you can see, there's 10 satellites over here, and we have the signal gauge right here. So that's going to be from the controller to the actual aircraft. We have our battery power, which is 91%. After that, about half hour of updates. Our maps here, height and distance down here. So this is all in meters right now. Hopefully we can change that in uh, the uh, app for Imperial for feet and miles. We have our EV value, AE lock. We have camera auto settings, which is on now. And then these are our pictures. Start and stop recording in pictures. And this takes us into our gallery to play our photos. It looks like this one does not have any onboard storage, guys. So they don't give you a memory card in the package. And I don't see any indication of it having onboard storage like some of the newer Mavics do. So keep in mind, you're going to have to get a separate uh, memory card. Calibrate your IMU when you're on a perfectly level surface at home. And calibrate your compass when you're in your flying area just so it kind of knows the magnetic fields around you. And make sure you do that away from any kind of metal objects. Remote identification. So it looks like that's their new UUID system. So your aircraft can be identified if you do stupid things. So don't do stupid things like fly near airports or sky high over 400 feet. Payload mode. When enabled, the aircraft will reduce its max flight speed and distance flying within line of sight recommended. So does that mean that uh, they're gonna have attachments for this thing? That's kind of interesting. So you can turn that off or on here. So maybe if you put on like a, maybe a fishing drop mechanism and drop your line out there, it'll uh, amp up the motor so it can lift more weight. <laughs> that's, that's really interesting. Meters, kilometers, and Imperial. I wanna choose Imperial, because I'm here in the US. We like our feet and miles. Gimbal calibration, so maybe something else you wanna do, keep it on a fully, perfectly level surface, very still in your house, and you can just go ahead and hit that and make sure your gimbal's perfectly level. Definitely wanna do those calibrations that have anything to do with level on a perfectly flat surface, always with any drone in your house before you go to the field. I'm just gonna leave it in mode two, but if you are somewhere else in the country where you like your controls differently set up on both sticks, 
you can go ahead and do that. Camera, here we go. So four by three or 16 by nine. I'm gonna choose 16 by nine. Channel mode 5.8, can't change that. Manual or auto, let's see if we go into manual. Nope, so it's locked in at 5.8. What I didn't see is any gimbal speed control. So you're gonna have to control your finger pretty good with this one. And it looks like it's able to do it. If you're just pushing up and down really slowly, you see how smooth you can get your video there. There's one more thing down here that's uh, kind of hidden, but it is good to know for you guys that like to kind of manually do your photography. And there is a little camera icon here. And if we press auto, it puts it in manual and check that out. So we can adjust three things, uh, ISO, shutter, and M.M. .M. And if we press on ISO, check it out. We can go from 100, we can scroll all the way to 32. There's our shutter speed. So it's at 1 100th right now. I can go all the way, wow, 1 8,000, all the way down to, oh my gosh, that's incredible all the way down to four inch. That's amazing. So you have a lot of options there. I'm, an, I'm kind of an auto guy, so I'm probably gonna leave this in auto for the first few tests until I figure it out. And then of course you can do your AE lock, unlock, and your EV. Okay, that's how you change the EV, I was wondering. You gotta press on EV, and then you can actually manually change your EV setting. You see how that's brightening up the screen there? So you do have quite a bit of options, guys, on the camera. I didn't think you were gonna have this much. There we go, let's go back to zero. Position hold, which is basic uh, GPS mode, sport mode, and also the cinematic mode. So you can easily, even though there's no button on the controller, physical button, at least you can press that quickly to uh, get through the three modes. So you see this thing here? So what that is, is kind of a compass that's supposed to be your controller with the array of where your controller is facing. And then that little tiny dot is supposed to be where the drone is. For some reason, it thinks it's over to the right, probably because I'm so close to it. But when you fly, that should be a good indicator on uh, where the actual drone is compared to your controller. So you can always keep it out towards the front. So if we click on the map, it initially kind of expands it to this smaller window. Then if we click on it again, it makes the full screen map. So now we have our FPV in the bottom left window, and then we have our full map with all of our no-fly zones. Icon down here which says, find my drone. So if you do lose your drone, you can go ahead and search for it. You can also have the option to do start flashing and beeping. So if you think you're getting close to your drone, press this when you're doing the find my drone. And check that out. It's vibrating, the motors. And it's also making a red light flash on the back. Stop flashing. There we go. The one thing I'm not seeing, guys, is how to change the maps to the actual satellite maps. All I'm seeing is kind of like this road map here. So maybe, hopefully, in a future update, they can uh, actually get that working. Anyway, pressing on the FPV again, and that takes us back down to having the FPV here and your map on the bottom left and then we can minimize that. I had this thing sitting here in between. I had to offload some memory on this camera because it filled up uh, with 4K video on the camera I'm shooting this with. I had to go offload that onto my computer and I left this guy on. And it's about, I wanna say 85 degrees in this room right now. And I got this message up here that said processor overheating, turn off Mavic Mini and restart when cooled down. So just like a lot of other DJI stuff, um, there it goes. So it just came up. Aircraft processor chip overheating. Aircraft processor overheated. Power off aircraft. Allow aircraft to cool down before use. So I wouldn't leave this thing on any more than you need to update it. Just sitting on the table here. This is one of those ones that's going to get really hot since it's so small. There's a lot of small components in there. So make sure you fly this as soon as you can once everything is ready to fly. You don't want to do damage by constantly overheating your processor. So there we go. I think that's going to do it for the Mavic Mini unboxing, setup, and updating, getting kind of familiar with the interface. Next step, guys, is going to take this thing out. We're going to go out in the park. We're going to do a full-on range test with at least one battery. Now, this thing, they claim, can fly for almost 
30 minutes. So we are gonna do all we can in a real-time review in 30 minutes. I'll have the series again pop up here. This is gonna be the playlist where you can see all of the videos. I'll also have the links down in the description uh, for the Mavic Mini and also the link on the playlist down there as well. Go ahead and comment, tell me what you think and I will see you guys in the flight test. Hope you enjoyed that and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.